this prestigious honor? Well, um, I'm obviously delighted and honored to receive it. Uh, I'm probably the oldest trustee or the longest serving trustee. Wow, how long have you been serving? Uh, close to 50 years. That's incredible. So I think they're giving me an honor to get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Tell us a little bit about your experience with AI. I don't know when you graduated from the program, but tell us how that program affected your career choice, you know, influenced the choices that you made. I, I'm a double recipient of awards from uh, AI. The first was for my undergraduate work, which uh, was 1961 to 1965. And I must say, one of the things that stands out for me, for AAI, is that even though I was enrolled in, in uh, Mount Holyoke, and I married a Harvard man, they did everything they could to get me transferred to Harvard. And, and they did it without my missing any time in my academic calendar. So I'm always grateful to them for making sure I finished on time to the pleasure of my parents. <laughs> All right, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Wow, this is such a prestigious honor and title. I know Miss Mara McLean has been leading the organization for quite a long time. Does that put any pressure on you? She was in charge for 16 years and now you're coming in and taking over. How do you feel about this uh, position? Well, I'm very, very excited. Um, Mora has been a great support to me over the past two months that I've been working with her. And since I'll be officially taking over the organization on Monday, I'm excited and I know that I'll get a lot of support from the people who've supported AI in the past. And I love the work. You know, I think um, building the capacity of Africans is, is an important work and, and I'm glad to be a part of it and bringing the best that is of Africa and the best that is of America together um, is also another part of our mission and I'm excited to make all those things happen. 50 years is a very long time. What has kept you here, especially now that there are so many nonprofit organizations doing in Africa, doing work in Africa, why AAI? Well, AAI was the premier organization. It was there at the beginning. Uh, it was there before this rather historic independence uh, movement took place over Africa. And it focused on several things which I believe were critical to the success of the decolonization and the independence movement. The first one was a very heavy focus on human development. I think we as an institution probably uh, dispersed more funds for higher education uh, in Africa, uh, in Afgrad programs, jointly with American universities and USAID. And then before countries became, many of the countries became independent, we were sort of the convener. Uh, we had these conferences, uh, meetings, where liberation leaders, people who had not yet assumed responsibility for government, could meet other leaders in the world and uh, I believe it was a transition period. Now, of course, they have ambassadors and ministers, but in those days they didn't. So it was during that period. And then finally, uh, informing Americans about Africa. of the Surly um, Women Market Fund. Tell us a little bit about that and what, what that um, organization um, seeks to do. The Surly Market Women's Fund seeks to empower market women. As you know in Africa, if someone tells you you are just a market woman, it, it really is a very, it, you, it means you belong to the lowest social economic strata. You're an African, aren't you? Yeah. So you know what it means to be told you are just a market woman. Basically, what we are doing for market women is first of all to give them a decent place of work, which is to have markets that are clean, that have water and sanitation, that have banking facilities, that have health facilities, 
that have a place for their children to play in, a clean, neat place, a little crutch for their children to play in. And of course, the important thing that market women really like is the literacy. Because, you know, not to be able to read is uh, a very uh, demoralizing state to be in. It's a rather dehumanizing state to be in. So they're so excited when they learn to read, they can count their change, they can work their telephone. That's excellent. You know, I went to Ghana and I can attest to how hard these women work and how much they're contributing to the economy at large. So thank you very much for what you're doing and I hope you have a great evening. I know you're very active in media now. So how has what you learned here, experience, influence, everything that you're doing back home? Media, of course, means uh, freedom of speech for me, freedom of choice to make one's own decisions, especially in the democratic area. And CTFM has a lot of young people being employed by myself, and so is the newspaper. And basically, uh, I encourage them to challenge the system. I encourage them to be open-minded. I encourage them to be fair, even to people who may insult us. But uh, basically, the friends here in America, uh, is the best training uh, for, for business, for both business and democracy in Africa. I want to ask you one thing because I think education, everything you mentioned is so important, but what about mentorship? I find out that nowadays a lot of young African professionals like myself, we have a difficult time finding people like you to say, can you teach us something? So how do you plan on, do you have any plans for mentorship within the program? Well, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's actually part of the plan um, to basically bridge the gap between those who have come before us at AI, meaning those individuals that we've assisted to receive scholarships to come to the United States to study, who have gone on to become leaders in their industry, to bring those folks with the upcoming professionals, bring them together so that they can learn from each other. So it is also part of our mission to bring mentorship as part of you know, what we do and what we help happen. Mr. Armentafia, what advice do you have for young African professionals who are watching you, have aspirations to get to where you are today? What would you say to them? Uh, don't forget, there are 600 million unemployed youth under 25 years of age in Africa today. It's a very dangerous uh, phenomenon. For it's a, it's, a, it's a threat to the social, social fabric. So the young, educated, uh, I'll say lucky, uh, young people now should look at those numbers and see what they can do to, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big demand, it's a big demand in terms of uh, population. What can you do to market to, to those people? Since 1953, I, I believe that's when the organization was founded, it's definitely accomplished a lot. But what do you personally hope for the future of this organization? Well, to play a relevant role, and uh, by relevant uh, today, since we are now talking about independent countries, I think the first step is to listen very carefully to what it is that would help these countries to reach the next stage after independence development. And I think we probably should continue to focus on human development because in the final analysis, it's human beings that make things happen, that change things. And education remains, in my mind, one of the most critical elements uh, and one of the, the invisible assets, but they are the lasting assets because those, that's what makes things happen. So I'm sure the Institute will find a very relevant role to play, but in conjunction with what the African countries want and need. Well, thank you very much and congratulations again. I hope you have a great night.